Thank you all for being here and for being part of this exceptional global community. Nowadays, most organizations have too many projects and this can cause delay, frustration, and endless chaos. Our first session will look at what the research shows by beginning with the root cause of project overload and the tools and techniques to overcome them. To deliver this address, please join me in welcoming to the stage a man on a mission to help PMOs deliver successful projects, the founder and CEO of Transparent Choice, Mr. Stuart Easton. Good morning. Since I'm first up, hear me. someone wave at me, let me know you can hear me. Brilliant, thank you. So my day job uh, is I run Transparent Choice, a company that, that does project prioritization, portfolio management, uh, and, and then I, I guest lecture at various universities on, on the topic of pro portfolio management and project prioritization. And, and in, that, in that day job, I have, the, uh, I have the, the great honor to speak to lots of PMO leaders around the world. And um, what I hear time and again is that their biggest problem is that they have too many projects. So quick, quickly, who has too many projects? Who feels like they have too many projects? Be honest, put your hands up. I know this isn't a very kind of Saudi thing to do, to put your hand up in a big conference, but stick your hand up. Okay, there's a few of you willing to admit it. My guess is that a few more of you have this problem than are admitting it. So, so we're going to look at this problem of too many projects and how to fix it. There are three big messages I want you to take away today. Okay? The first one is that you cannot execute your portfolio projects well if you have too many projects. You cannot execute well right, if you have too many projects. Second, there is a right way to fix this, and it's called AHP. We're going to cover that a little bit later on. Um, third, the cost of not doing this is huge. Turn that around. The opportunity to add more value as a project delivery team here is huge if you can solve this problem of having too many projects. So let's start by looking at data. I promised research and data, so let's jump into that. This is data from the PMI into project success rates. You can't read this from the back, right? It's far too small, so let me tell you what's going on. We care, ooh, that's me told. We care mostly about the top line here, right? The top line is what percentage of projects hit their intended business goals. Okay, so that's the only reason we do projects, is to deliver the business goals, right? We don't do it so we can feel good and say, yeah, we finished my project, right? We do it to deliver business goals. And for the last decade or so, right, that, that percentage has kind of wobbled between 60%, 70%, right? It's gone up and down, up and down, but between 60 and 70%. Other surveys have showed it that it's more like 40 to 60%. It doesn't really matter. This isn't good enough. Right, PMI did some, research, some more research, the, and, and the, you know, the best organizations deliver projects, um, deliver the business value about 92% of the time. Right? So 60 to 70%, that's not good enough. Imagine, right, who, who, who drives to work in the morning? Uh, you don't have to put your hands up. I know you don't like doing that. Thank you. Um, so you drive to work in the morning. You get in your car, right? You start going down the highway, but you only get to work 70% of the time. The other 30% of the time, your car breaks down, you're late, you don't make it to work, right? What would you do? Right, would you keep that car? No. You either get it fixed or you get rid of it. Get a new car. And that's what's going through the, your executives' minds right now, right? If you're a PMO leader and you're only delivering this average number of about 70% projects on time, 70% uh, of projects delivering business value, then you are that car, right? and it's not good enough. Um, so what do you do? Right? Well, how do you fix it? Well, what most people do is they, they go out and they, they start putting in place more process. Right? Maybe it's our project methodology that's broken, so we put in more process, more templates, more reporting. Has that worked? No. We've been doing that for, for years, right? and it's not worked. Now. I say that, that's not fair. If you go back 20, 25 years, that top line would have been 30%. Okay, so all those, all those certifications, all those templates, all those processes have helped us get from 30% to 70%, but then it's flat. 
right? And so templates, process, all that stuff, that's not going to move you forward. So, um, so and, and, and worse than that, it moves you backwards. Because all of that extra process means that your project managers aren't working on projects. What they're really doing is they're filling in your templates and writing reports. Right? And they're not doing the actual work. So it makes it worse. And so most PMOs are actually seen as bureaucratic organizations. Right? Around, and this is around the world. And, 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 are, and, and a lot of them are called into, pro, into uh, question by the senior leadership team. Right? What are you for if you're just adding bureaucracy? So let's look at why projects really fail. Right? So, so I don't know if Laura, is Laura Barnard in the room? I stole this. There she is. Right? So this, I stole this slide from Laura. Um, I don't know if anybody saw her talk yesterday. It was brilliant. Um, but this is, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and just ask why. Why, 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 why? Why do projects fail? So your projects are taking too long or they're failing. Why? Well, the project managers must be useless. Right? So we go and we talk to the project managers and we ask them why. It turns out they're not useless. They're actually really good. So then why? Well, because the resources, the delivery resources aren't delivering what they said they would deliver. So you go to the delivery resources. Why? Why aren't you delivering? Oh, God, I've got so much work to do. I'm working on 15 different projects. I'm spinning three plates, and every time I finish one task, I get three new tasks. Right? So, so somewhere around about there, right, someone says, well, we've got a resource management problem then. No. This isn't, this isn't a resource, resource management problem. Your resources are working really hard. They're allocated properly. Right? This is fundamentally a problem that, that there's just too much work for those resources to deliver. Why? Why is there too much work? Because prioritization is broken. Right? So the fix is to fix prioritization. So we're going to look at how to do that. Um, so. In concept, in principle, project prioritization is easy. Five-year-olds can do it, right? If you show a five-year-old this picture and say, or offer the, offer, you know, put lots of lollipops on the table and say, you get to pick two lollipops. Which two lollipops are they going to pick? The big ones, right? Of course they're going to pick the big ones, right? So if, if a five-year-old can do it, surely we as an industry, right, grown-ups, we've all been through training, right? Surely we can do it, but actually the data says no. So this is PMI data, again. And um, they, they looked at um, you know, hundreds of portfolios and came to the conclusion, rather startling conclusion, that in a typical portfolio, 20% of projects are so badly aligned with the goals of the organization that they should be stopped. Okay, so I've got a new word for that. I don't want to call, call them badly aligned. I want to call them what they are, they're waste. So you're wasting 20% of your resources. At the same time, you have too many projects. Something's broken here, right? So round about now, right, what a good, a good professional does is we go and we ask Google. Google, how do you do prioritization? And you'll get 24,629 different videos and articles by various project management consultants telling you how to do project prioritization. But all of that advice has given you this number, right? It's fundamentally, the, the vast majority of the advice on prioritization is actually wrong. There's research into prioritization that tells you how you should do it. And most of the advice is wrong. And it turns out that you shouldn't be asking project management professionals how to fix project prioritization, because it's not a project management problem. It's a decision management problem. So the people we should be asking are the decision scientists, the little geeks, guys with the round glasses and the calculators and, you know, all those guys. And they've got a secret. The secret is that there's a right way to prioritize projects. So I mentioned decision scientists. There's loads of research going on around the world um, uh, in psychology departments, operational research departments, engineering departments, looking at project prioritization and how to do it well. For example, there was a study done for the, by the University of New South Wales. They looked at over 100 different methods for prioritizing projects. And out of that 100 methods, that's, this is the magic spreadsheet. It's comparing it with the priority matrix, uh, Moscow. Pick your favorite methodology that you'll have heard of from, from 
from a project management consultant somewhere, right? They looked at all of those methodologies, and out of them, only two were found to be suitable to prioritize projects in a large organization. And I'm talking about, in this particular study, just large organizations, so, uh, and that's probably everybody in this room, frankly. So those two uh, are called DEA, Data and Development Analysis, which is actually quite difficult to do, so we don't recommend that. The other one is called AHP, Analytic Hierarchy Process. And that, that's actually conceptually very simple, and that's, that's why we recommend it. It works, and it's simple. So AHP, in concept, is super simple. Right? You take your business goals, your strategy, you convert it into a set of criteria, you weight those criteria, and then you score projects against the criteria, you look at some pretty pictures, and you make a decision, right? It, it's simple, it's kind of obvious. It's what you would do in a spreadsheet. It's how you do it that's different, though. So AHP has got embedded in it all kinds of um, psychology capabilities. You use pairwise comparison to reduce bias and to reduce um, uh, game playing and all this kind of good stuff. So it's how you do this that matters. And, and AHP has a lot of um, checks and balances built into it to make sure that you get a good result. And a result, crucially, that your leadership team buys into. Okay? So the output of this AHP process is a scored list of projects. So every project has a score, zero to 100, say. 100 being good, zero being bad. So then there are a couple of ways that we recommend you visualize that data to help make good decisions, right? Because data itself isn't very useful. We want, we want information, not data, right? So the first visualization that we talk about is this kind of prioritization matrix. So you have value going up that way, you have cost going that way, and the best projects are up in the top left there, the stars, high value, low cost projects, we're gonna do those, right? Those are great, we're gonna do them. Down in the bottom left, we've got low value, high cost projects. What are we gonna do to those? We're gonna kill them. Now people often say to me, Stuart, we never kill projects. It's too political, it's too difficult. When you go through AH, the AHP process, because the executives buy into it so much, right? They own the process. When they see projects in that bottom left corner, they just kill their own projects. You don't have to do anything. They kill them, right? So this is great. So, and, and, and then we can talk about Rolls-Royce projects, which are really high value, but maybe not good value for money because they're so expensive, right? So, so that really exciting project that everybody's excited about, maybe we shouldn't do it, right? And backpack fillers are great just for, you know, Filling up, the, filling up any little spaces that you've got left. The other visualization that I always recommend is, is the efficient frontier, sometimes called the Pareto chart. And so here what we're doing is we're looking at the whole portfolio and we're looking at the value delivered by the portfolio as you increase budget. If you, if you selected the most efficient portfolio projects at every step. So this is really, really powerful because it means, let's say you've got a hundred million dollars to spend, you just look along that bottom, bottom axis, you come to a hundred million dollars, you go up the dotted line and across, and, and that tells you everything inside that rectangle. That's the most efficient way to spend a hundred million dollars. We don't need to spend six months debating it. We don't need politics behind closed doors arguing about it. We just read it off a chart. It's data driven, it's simple. So these are, these are the bread and butter visualizations that really, really help when you're prioritizing uh, projects. And my advice is keep it as simple and as clear as you can. Now, at this point, somebody normally says, yeah, but Stuart, you know, spreadsheets are free. Why don't we just use a spreadsheet, right? We've all heard that one, right? And um, so I'm gonna challenge that, right? Those spreadsheets that everybody's using today, they're giving us 20% waste. So if you're investing $10 million a year in your portfolio, right? That means that $2 million of that investment is waste. But it's worse than that because you expect to make a return on your investment. Laura talked a lot about this uh, yesterday, right? You expect to make a return on your investment. So let's say you're expecting a three times return. So you're not, losing, you're not wasting $2 million. You're losing out on $6 million of value every year. So that spreadsheet is not free. That is one expensive spreadsheet, and I wouldn't want to be the person trying to defend using a spreadsheet that's costing the organization $6 million a year. 
Make sense? So, this is great. We figured out how we can reduce waste, pick the portfolio that's most impactful, get the right number of projects, presentation's done, right? No, there's a bonus. Because when you do this, when you right size your portfolio, something else magical happens that I'm gonna share with you now. So, imagine a road, okay? The goal of the road is to get people from A to B, right? You put them in cars and they get from A to B. Your projects are the cars, people are the business value, the road is your resources for delivering, okay? So if you have no projects, nobody gets from A to B. There are no cars on the road. That's not very useful. So what do you do? You put some cars on the road, you do some projects. And the cars are zooming along full speed, still loads of road left, so we put some more cars on. And then we put some more cars on, and more cars on, just like you do in Riyadh, right? Two in the morning, the roads are clear. But you add more and more and more cars, what happens? Eventually, you get to 100% utilization, yippee! We're utilizing our resources 100%, but we've got a traffic jam, right? Projects collide, you have resource contention, that's a real problem. So converting this, okay, this is a fun example, but convert this into projects. So the vertical axis here is the business value you actually deliver, right? So how much value is flowing through? How many projects do you finish that deliver business value? Right, so you add more projects. If you have low utilization over at this end, Right, you add more projects, you deliver more value, more projects, but eventually you get resource contention and other things kicking in, and suddenly, boom, your productivity drops off really quickly. Usually happens around about 80, 85% resource utilization. But most organizations, they're right over here on the left-hand side. And when executives are getting frustrated and they say, we need more value from the PMO or from the projects, right, and they see you've got 10 or 15 percent of your resources not utilized what do they say fill them up give them more projects but that just makes it worse that slows your projects down that means you deliver less value so what you have to do is come back and position yourself on the top of the hill reduce the number of projects put yourself on the top of the hill and you will increase the flow of projects and the flow of value so you put in place your ahp based prioritization Okay. It's a higher hill, first of all, and then you put yourself on top of the hill. Right? So it's a higher hill because we have less waste, and you put yourself on top of the hill. And when you look at how much business value you're going to deliver, right, it's a lot more value that you can deliver from the exact same resources. And when you combine this with techniques like uh, staggering projects and, and all that kind of good stuff, it's, it's quite common to see two or three times more lower value from your projects than before you do this, okay? Two to three times more value from the exact same resources, right? Wow, that's, that's pretty big impact. And all of this stems from asking, right? So most people, when they think of too many projects, it's just a pain, right? Oh, there's so much work, too many projects. No, that's the wrong way to think about it. It's about the wow. You can fix too many projects, you can deliver the wow. All right, so that brings us back to the three key points. Right? You cannot execute well if you have too many projects. There's a right way to do it. You can do it other ways, but the way that's gonna give you the best answer is AHP. And the cost of not addressing this right now is huge. So in my book, that makes this problem of too many projects the most important problem for most PMOs that I talk to, right? So, so get out and do something about it. Um, thank you. To help you get started, we've put together, if you scan this barcode, uh, or this uh, QR code, excuse me. Um, so if you take a picture of that, click on through, there's a whole bunch of resources there that will help you get started. There's a longer version of this talk uh, that, that I recorded. It's, it's very silly. It's got lots of ducks and eggs and all kinds of things going on in it. Uh, that I recorded in a, a nature reserve in, back in England. Um, there's there's a, a guide to prioritization. There are various blogs that are, that will help you get started. And, uh, and, and that will lead you to other resources, and they're all free on our website to help you solve this problem. So I hope you will solve it. I hope you'll take action. I hope you understand the link between having too many projects and fundamentally delivering value to your organization. Thank you very much.